There have been massive glacier carved mountains rising from the ocean, an abundance of wildlife, icebergs floating right past our ship, and colorful villages in some of the most remote corners of the world. Welcome to the edge of the Arctic. dream expedition for the next 19 days to Greenland. But of course, every adventure needs to start somewhere. In our case, it was out of the west fjords of Iceland. After that, we'll be crossing the Denmark Strait, hitting the eastern side of Greenland, working our way around the southern tip, all the way up to the west side. It's gonna be an amazing 19 days that we can't wait to share on board with the National Geographic Explorer, compliments of Lindblad Expeditions. We have been dreaming of traveling with Lindblad Expeditions. We could not believe that this dream was coming true as we boarded the ship and made our way to our cabin. They even had parkas waiting for us that we immediately had to try on. Parka and down jackets. <laughs> After checking out the beautiful cabin that we'll be spending the next 19 days in, we ran outside and waved goodbye to Reykjavik and headed toward the west fjords of Iceland. Good afternoon, guys. It's been a uh, really peaceful morning. We're just kind of working our way to our first big stop, get our uh, muck boots on and get on land. In order to explore each destination throughout our excursion, the ship anchors offshore. All guests must disembark the ship through the Zodiac room in order to reach land. Each guest has their own cubby for their muck boots where you can swap your shoes if needed. Usually this is needed mostly for wet landings or very cold days. Then we walk through a disinfectant bucket, which you do every time you disembark and re-embark the ship. The Zodiacs pull up directly to the side of the ship and then you safely step on with the cruise assistance. Then you head to shore. Honestly, the combination of expedition ships and Zodiacs is the absolute best way to experience remote corners of the globe. The first few days of our expedition began in the west fjords of Iceland. We explored the small islands of Flati Island and Vigor Island, which are both known for an abundance of bird life in the summer months. Specifically, the Atlantic Puffin and Arctic Terns. Since the Arctic Terns are protecting their nests, you are only allowed to walk through with a guide, and you must hold a stick high above your head the entire time. This is because the birds will literally dive down to attack the tallest point on your body. On our last day in the west fjords of Iceland, we woke up at sunrise to see the remote Dianji waterfall. We spent a few hours that afternoon out on the kayaks. Now it was time to cross the Denmark Strait. We were about to sail 300 nautical miles for almost two full days and reach Greenland. Good morning, everyone. It is 2.16 a.m. and uh, we just finished crossing the Denmark Strait. Last night I went to the captain and I had asked him to wake me up as soon as he sees the eastern coast of Greenland. And sure enough, he called me at 2.16 a.m. and sunrise it's until four. And I'm very excited to go see what we're looking at.
after an absolutely incredible sunrise, we sailed into a remote fjord in eastern Greenland. So we anchored ship and went for a zodiac cruise to admire the icebergs and glaciers for a little bit. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> then the crew found a shore landing destination. So we went ashore and actually stepped foot in Greenland for the very first time. We went on a five mile hike up a remote valley with our expedition leaders telling us facts and educating us on our surroundings the whole time. We hiked along the glacier runoff water and took in the scenery of the towering mountain peaks carved by receding glaciers around us. We finished up our first afternoon in Greenland and we went back to the ship and began our journey to around the southern edge of the country. We spent several days in the south visiting many remote villages and many historical sites. In addition to Greenland being full of beautiful landscapes and wildlife, it has so much history and culture to offer as well. Many early settlers from the Canadian Arctic began arriving 4,500 years ago, and the Norse first arrived in southern Greenland around 1400 AD. After seeing these remote historical sites, it was time to spend a day at sea and head north to Nuuk, Greenland's capital. At the end of every day during cocktail hour, all the naturalists on board do a daily recap talking about all the epic adventures, all the things we learned, and basically everything educational that we should take away from these trips. Time on board the ship quickly became one of our favorite parts of traveling with Lindblad because there was an abundance of learning throughout each day. On our excursion, we had historians, National Geographic photographers, glaciologists, undersea specialists, and even a former Prime Minister of Greenland was traveling with us. This is our third time on the ship. Ask us anything. At most of our anchor sites, if weather allows, the undersea specialists will go for a deep sea dive and bring back their footage to show guests on board during cocktail hour. We are on a luxury expedition ship, and the spaces and food on board fully reflect this. We had three meals a day, plus tea time, every single day. It was easy to squeeze in a few runs and workouts with the ship's beautiful gym, which was surrounded with windows and panoramic views. We spent a day in Greenland's capital city of Nuuk, which is the northernmost capital in the world. It's home to one third of the country's entire population. Today, we've officially crossed over the Arctic Circle. Did you know that 80% of Greenland is literally covered in a huge sheet of ice? Crossing into the Arctic Circle showed us many signs of this. We were seeing icebergs and glaciers larger than we'd seen on the entire trip so far. One of the absolute top highlights of this expedition for us was visiting Iluasat, which is known for the Iluasat Ice Fjord and for huge icebergs in Disco Bay. We just saw the cutest little arctic fox running around on the ice. The town of Iluasat is known as the adventure capital of Greenland, and we could easily see why. Look at how incredible our day was here. After cruising through Disco Bay, we went ashore by Zodiac to Disco Island for a short hike. We were in awe when we hiked up a hill and looked back at our ship surrounded by icebergs in the distance. Another destination in Western Greenland we loved visiting was the town of Umanak. Fun fact, if you've ever sent a letter in the mail addressed to the North Pole, 
This is the town that it's sent to. Today, we are visiting the second largest town in Greenland known as Sisamute. Sisamute is a town we have been anticipating the entire expedition. It is home to roughly 1,000 Arctic dogs. We spent a few hours with the dogs and a local Greenlandic woman even showed us her four-week-old puppies. We have had such a wonderful experience on this expedition and we cannot believe how quickly this trip flew by. It feels like we really could spend another three weeks out here and we just still wouldn't be ready to leave. Yeah, Greenland's been on the top of our travel list for so long and it felt so unreachable and now that we're here experiencing it, feeling every ounce of just enjoyment that this Lindblad experience has offered, it's honestly been just such a rewarding experience. Um, I think we would do it all over again. With that, we are signing off. I hope you guys enjoyed following along. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, safe travels out there. Stay tuned for what's next. <laughs>